So I thought I'd do a, a short video on my APRS iGate for the International Space Station or ARISS. This is a uh, simple setup. The goal here is to basically receive the digipeated packets by the International Space Station under the alias ARISS and a digipeter call sign, one of them being RS0ISS. Then take those digipeated packets and then gate them to the uh, APRSIS servers. So um, that's the primary intent of the iGate for APRS uh, for International Space Station. Additionally, uh, the station is also interested in sending out recurring beacons via RF so that the International Space Station can receive them and digipede them for other ISS iGates to gate my packets so that I could be visible on the APRS IS log sheet or through visualizations such as ARISS.net or through APRS.fi website. So that's the Raspberry Pi with the piggyback of uh, TNC Pi and it's currently running the APRX software the latest version. It's currently running the APRX in the TX iGate mode and it's hooked up to my 5 watt Yaesu FT1D currently at least just for experimenting purposes. Uh, it's currently tuned into 145.825 note that the APRS features on this radio is turned off. What this radio is providing is just the the access to the RF packets coming in on that 145.825 and then providing a bridge to be able to transmit packets back to RF. So it's really just a TXRX node tuned into 145.825 and it's really not leveraging the APRS capabilities of this radio which is really not required for this particular operation because most of the processing is handled by the APRX software and by the TNC Pi from a hardware software standpoint. So this radio could really be replaced with whatever radio that knows how to receive and transmit. So it could be a Bofang UV5R, it could be another radio like this one, Yaesu VX8R, or a 75 watt uh, Yaesu FT2900. I'm also experimenting with this radio in parallel with uh, the FT1D. Now, what I've realized is the 5 watt power is sufficient for International Space Station so long as you have a good solid antenna I think you should be in a good shape to transmit a 5 watt packet and you should still be heard by the ARISS digipeter upon the ISS and also you need a good antenna for reception so that you're hearing really feeble packets coming in over RF so what I use is a Comet GP9 are installed up on my rooftop. It's a dual band antenna but I only use a two meter portion of it. It works really well. It's got a very high gain specs on it. Very very uh, happy with that antenna. Now the 75 watt is also very useful if you wanna send out your packets and make sure they are heard by the ISS but I think the 5 watt by itself should be plenty good is what I'm understanding based on my experiments over the last couple of weeks here. The radio 
is hooked up through this cable into my antenna switch in the back to here and when I'm ready to test or experiment I flip it over to switch number or port number one and that should take care of it but eventually what I'd like to do is leave it on on a separate antenna a dedicated Comet GP9 antenna which I will be installing in the near future that way I'm not babysitting this for every pass through currently I am because uh, of the experimental nature of this project on the Raspberry Pi front the FT1D is hooked up through the speaker microphone jack and through this adapter that you can get from Yesu um, and then take a split of the microphone and the speaker and then I made a DB9 custom cable and then installed that into the TNC Pi. So that's the Raspberry Pi in the back. It's just the power cable and then we got a, a wired network cable and external USB stick for storing my scripts and whatnot. So we also talked about replacing this radio with a Bofang UV5R. I tried that as an experiment here. So I have a UV5R and I made a custom cable basically pulling out its microphone and speaker into a, uh, a DB9. I'll post the wiring diagrams uh, once I publish this video and uh, also in my blog. That radio essentially bare bones it's 5 watts output all it does is receives and transmits there's no specialized circuitry in this radio for packet processing of uh, APRS or anything of that nature maybe a $25-$30 dollar radio and that radio is also connected up to the antenna switch as you can tell in the back. It's cradled up on the uh, charger cable. Now one thing to note is data is received by Bofang. It basically sends it out through the speaker line and then that's received by the TNC Pi through the DB9 port. And obviously there's some calibration that needs to happen at the TNC Pi level for making sure that it is receiving the audio at a level that's sufficient enough for the TNC Pi to parse, digest, understand what those audio waves really mean and convert those to APRS understandable packets. 